We're coming to you from the Radford Studio Center lot in Studio City, right over the hill from Hollywood. This is the place where dreams are made, legends are born. Hello and welcome to The Lot. I'm Suzanne Marquez. We already know who's up for the big awards, but now we know who's going to be taking the stage at the Grammys. And the list of performers includes a Latin music icon people just can't get enough of. That's Bad Bunny, of course, and there's something for everyone this year, from Latin to R&B to country artists like Luke Combs. We will also see the icon Mary J. Blige perform. Other nominees hitting the stage that night include Brandi Carlisle, Lizzo, and Sam Smith. But the full list of performers is growing. And you can tune in to watch all of them at the 65th Annual Grammy Awards Sunday night, February 5th on CBS and Paramount+. Plus. And tune in before the show on our stream on CBS News Los Angeles. I will be there live with all the buildup and excitement from the red carpet. Speaking of Mary J. Blige, the Grammy-winning sensation is on the cover of People Magazine's Black History Month issue. After four decades in the business, the 52-year-old singer has released 15 studio albums. Blige says she finally feels like she has her life together and says each morning she wakes up, looks in the mirror, and says, Good Morning, Gorgeous, which is also the title track of her latest album, which is also up for six Grammys. Justin Bieber has sold the publishing rights to his music catalog. The music rights investment company Hypnosis made the announcement yesterday. According to Rolling Stone magazine, the deal is worth about $200 million. That's the highest for any artist in Bieber's generation. Relationships, breakups, we've all been there. So what do you do when you're in the limelight and you need a way to express yourself? Well, you write it out. And Miley Cyrus gave us all something to talk about with her new song, Flowers. And we're breaking it down with all the wild theories on her massive hit. Yeah, I can love me better than you can. Flowers is in full bloom. The track hit number one on the Billboard Hot 100 chart in its debut week and broke Spotify's first week streaming record, reaching 100 million streams faster than any song before. The song even has Oscar winner Diane Keaton dancing. Written and sung by Miley Cyrus, the single has brought everyone to a frenzy as they try to decipher if the lyrics are about ex Liam Hemsworth. The song was released on January 13th, which just so happens to be Liam's birthday. Coincidence? We'll let you decide. Or perhaps Miley Cyrus's sister Brandy can weigh in. The song did come out on his birthday. Was that on purpose? I don't know. Can't say. Genius, though. Miley fans, I love ya. Brandy dished out her thoughts on the speculation on her podcast, Your Favorite Thing, with co host and reality star Wells Adams, but decided to stay mum on the topic and credited the fans for coming up with some of the best fan theories. Fans were quick to notice that her chorus sounded a little like Bruno Mars' 2013 single, When I Was Your Man, a song that Liam reportedly dedicated to Miley. And everything that Bruno says in the song, Miley comes back to basically say, don't worry, I can do it for myself. Talk about feeling empowered. Miley's music video had fans taking notes for Easter eggs as well. One of those speculations is that the house featured in the video is the same house Liam used to cheat on Miley with. What? However, there is zero confirmation that's actually true. Next, fans are even breaking down her outfits. That beautiful gold dress is now being compared to one that Liam's Hunger Games co-star wore at the 2012 premiere of their movie. It's reaping day. The place is crawling with peace. <laughs> the Oscar winner once hinted she and Liam had kissed when cameras weren't rolling. Did that happen while Miley and Liam were together? We don't know. What we do know is that both dresses are completely different. Miley is wearing a vintage sequined hoodie St. Laurent dress, while Jennifer is wearing a Prabal Gurum gown. 
Despite the similar color, the designers, shape and structure of the dresses are completely different. It's likely not an intentional reference. I didn't wanna fight. Moving on to the suit she's wearing in the video, fans are also saying that's another callback to Liam. In 2019, a video of he and Miley at the Avengers Endgame premiere went viral as it appears he tells Miley to behave for once when she sticks her tongue out. And now fans think she's wearing the exact same suit he wore to the event. But not so fast. The suit she's wearing is from St. Laurent's 2022 collection, which means there's no way Liam was wearing the exact same suit in 2019. At least we got that cleared up. So what does this Brandy think about all of these theories? And it's just too good. Like every day I wake up to a new one. Like, is any of it true? I'm not here to say. What's oh, come true, on. Not true. It's a firsthand experience situation. Only Miley knows the truth. So we guess the jury is out. We'll let you decide. Whatever the reasons and whatever speculations people have, one thing is for certain, the song is worthy of being number one in the world right now. We can't talk new music without mentioning Taylor Swift. She said, meet me at midnight and her fans sure did. The singer dropped a third music video from her latest album, Midnight's recently, and within hours it had millions and millions of views. That's the album's first track, Lavender Haze. Swift directed the video herself, and fans are even finding Easter eggs all over it, like a possible sign of the pop star planning to re-release her 2010 album, Speak Now. The video comes after Swifty's battle with Ticketmaster made it to the Senate, with lawmakers holding a hearing about the company's botched ticket sales for the Eras Tour. So this is a little treat for those fans who didn't manage to score tickets, and it may not be the last for this album. And when we come back, we take a look at the Oscar nominees. Are your favorites in the running? Stay with us. So what does her heartbeat sound like? Mighty. That sound you just heard was Avatar The Way of Water flying past $600 million at the domestic box office. It is only the 13th film to ever do that, but the third straight for director James Cameron. The film just received four Oscar nods, including Best Picture. And speaking of the Academy Awards, there are so many surprises and snubs from Best Picture to Best Actress, and we're taking a look at the big nominees. From another universe. I'm here because we need your help. Everything, everywhere, all at once is all the rage with Academy voters. The offbeat sci-fi movie picked up 11 Oscar nods, including Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Actress for star Michelle Yeoh. Time is the essential piece of interpretation. Her biggest competition may be two-time Oscar winner Kate Blanchett for her award-winning performance in the drama Tar. Rounding out the category, Michelle Williams in The Fablemans, Anna de Armas as Marilyn Monroe in Blonde, and what many insiders consider a surprise, Andrea Riseborough in To Leslie. Blockbusters made a comeback this year. Top Gun Maverick and Avatar The Way of Water are nominated for Best Picture a year after streaming movies dominated the competition. Also nominated, Elvis, The Banshees of Inishirin, the Fablemans, Tar, and All Quiet on the Western Front, Women Talking, as well as Triangle of Sadness. Let me. As expected, Brendan Fraser earned a nod for his role in The Whale. He's up against Colin Farrell from the dark comedy The Banshees of Inishirin, Austin Butler in Elvis, Bill Nye in Living, and in another surprise, Paul Mescal in After Sun. I think, honestly, it's going to be Austin Butler. There's extra weight to his nomination with the recent death of Lisa Marie Presley. Who? Are you? Angela Bassett received a nod for her supporting role in Black Panther Wakanda Forever, a first for an actor in a movie from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Thinking about catching a movie this weekend? We have a preview of a few films you should check out. Screaming the eyes. Jennifer Lopez recently married Ben Affleck, but we doubt the lives of her guests depended on her like they do in Shotgun Wedding. In this new rom-com, or should I say rom comeback, Darcy and Tom, who are played by Jennifer and Josh Duhamel, gather their loved ones for their ultimate destination wedding. But before walking down the aisle and saying yes, their big day takes a turn for the worst when their ceremony gets hijacked and all of their guests are held hostage. 
including Jennifer Coolidge, who plays Jamel's mother, and Cheech Marin, the bride's father. So you know the film is going to be funny. Where is the father of the bride? Robert, Robert, they're calling you. Thanks a lot, Carol. The couple will learn the meaning of till death do us part in this hilarious but adrenaline-fueled flick as they remember why they fell in love with each other in the first place. The movie is streaming now on Prime Video. It was a reflex action. From one rom-com to another, here's Maybe I Do. Meet Michelle and Alan, who are played by Emma Roberts and Luke Bracey, a couple who are contemplating the next step in their relationship. But before they can move forward, it's time for the parents to finally meet. He wants me to be happy with her in the future. I think that sounds romantic. <laughs> I think it's science fiction. And let's just say things get a little tricky when the parents realize each spouse is sleeping with the other. Wait, what? That's right. This sure will make for an interesting night. The film stars Diane Keaton, Richard Gere, Susan Sarandon, and William H. Macy, so you know it's going to be good. I actually came here looking for inspiration. If you're looking for a horror film that will make your heart race, then Infinity Pool is a must-watch thriller that will keep you glued to the edge of your seat. I don't understand why we're doing this. In this couple's getaway, Alexander Skarsgård and Cleopatra Coleman command your attention as James and M, a well-to-do married couple who find more than they bargain for while on vacation at a pristine island resort in a country where crime carries an unimaginable penalty. And when James, a frustrated author, meets a fan of his, played by Mia Goth, all hell breaks loose. Mia's character, Gabby, convinces them to explore the outside grounds of the resort. And after a fatal accident, the couple soon learned that there is a zero tolerance policy for crime. And the only way out is to be executed, or if they can afford it, see themselves get killed instead. Yeah, you heard that right. Talk about scary. Now we have a look at 80 for Brady. It's a film about four women who go to the Super Bowl to watch their favorite player, Tom Brady, and they're played by four Oscar winning actresses, Lily Tomlin, Jane Fonda, Rita Moreno and Sally Field. They are legendary, but get them together and they act up. The film is hitting theaters February 3rd. Game's about to start. Oh. There's Tom. Oh, oh, what a beautiful man. I like Gronkowski. We know, Tris. We've all read your Gronk erotica. It's not erotica. It's fan fiction. Very sexy fan fiction. In 84 Brady, four best friends go on a road trip to the Super Bowl to see Tom Brady and his bestie, Gronk. They get into all sorts of trouble before the big game. And yes, the goat makes a cameo. It's really a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for me to be in their presence, to see them act. Um, you know, they are really the goats in what they do. And uh, what a treat for me to be on set, to watch them, to just see how they think and to see how they move and their charisma on camera and off camera. All their amazing suggestions, I think it brings this amazing story to life. And Lily Tomlin has a special moving scene with the film's namesake. I'm flabbergasted that it, uh, it sort of seemed to work. I wanted yeah. to, I, I wanted to say, Tom, the football player has got to become the football. <laughs> and they wouldn't let you, did they? And no. I'm, I'm still going, okay. I get it. She gets yeah. it. And it they, means They're a still lot. trying to explain it to me. <laughs> it was humorous, but it was heartfelt. Yeah. And just like in the movie, when you get these Oscar-winning actors together, trouble ensues. Help! 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 Oh, help. Oh, help. oh, oh sweet Mr. Who are we? Just a week. I can't hear one of your box spaces. Suzanne. 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 Oh, hey, yeah. Suzanne. Suzanne. I know Suzanne. Hi, hi, Sally. Good to see you again. Good to see you again. Suzanne, give me. I'm going to get you in one. We have gone. We've kind of unleashed here. We have spent too many days, too many hours doing this and good luck to you that's all i have I to know. say good luck i just good love luck your own now so start her time now her time is wholly started it was taken up honored. with instructions it's, and yeah we got to give her her space i interviewed sally field last year when she was promoting her movie spoiler alert Suzanne, Los Angeles person. Yeah. <laughs> see you every morning. You. So now that this fab foursome has worked together, there is no shortage of roasting each other after the bonds they made on set. Well, it's it's certainly true. You it can bond people, but also you know you're in you're in very fast company here, and uh, that's pretty exciting. 
I mean, you know, I do, I, I think of them as women, but I also think of them as these great big icons. So it's, it's difficult to make that leap when you're working with people with whom you're supposed to be close and friendly, which I was not at first. So it's, 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 um, it's, it's difficult. It was difficult for me, let me put it that way. It didn't look difficult. Well, it's not supposed Certainly to. I'm an actor. Oh, okay. You and did also, it. I mean, I feel like I had dinner with you in San Francisco at least twice. What? About eight years ago. Gosh. With your husband, who's now oh. deceased. Well, I know. It was, it was more like ten years ago. Okay. Right. More than that, even, well, maybe even. <laughs> yeah. But And then you had a part on, uh, on Grace and Frankie, and I was just yes. dazzled by your characterization. Uh, so I'm I'm like I'm gonna I'm gonna abandon the group now because I feel like I've been sort of dissed by um, why rapper Rita. Oh, she forgot you. Okay, well you know what we've all been bonded now. We're bonded deeply. Yeah, you're stuck and with totally, me totally, and and we're not gonna ever get rid of each other. I mean, Lord knows I'm gonna try. Uh I'm such a fan of all of these ladies together. And if you hadn't had enough, here's a sneak peek on a featurette hosted by Billy Porter. <laughs> so, what drew you all to this movie? Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, when you get a chance to work with, I mean, her, I know, but Sally, <laughs> Rita. It was too yeah. cool, yeah. Yeah, it was pretty great. Plus, the fact that it was based on a real story is so sweet. I like the fact that they're showing women as sports fans. If Tom Brady can make it to the Super Bowl, so can we. Let's have an adventure together. Yeah. It's funny, it's charming. Take it, this one. He's cute. It's something we really need right now. This movie is about friendship. What does friendship mean to each of you? Friendships between women is what keeps us going. That's what keeps us alive. Female friendship is so strong. We face the unknown together. Isn't that what friendship is? I wouldn't want to go through it with anyone else. It's so inspiring to see the energy, to see the joy that each of you carry with such grace. Follow me. Well, I like dancing with you. Oh. <laughs> How are we going to pull this off? We're going to need a team. And check this out. Paramount just dropped this new trailer for Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves. Chris Pine and Michelle Rodriguez star in this fantasy action film. It follows a team of thieves who helped the wrong person steal the wrong thing. Now they have to fix their mistakes and save the world. Finally, after years of delays, the movie is set to hit theaters March 31st. When we come back, we'll take a look at Paris Fashion Week and the attendees who have gone viral. There's nothing like models stepping out and showing up on the runway. And there's one show that stole all the headlines during Paris Fashion Week. And we have Kylie Jenner and Doja Cat to thank for that. The Scaparelli Haute Couture Spring Summer 2023 show serves so many looks. But we have to talk about Kylie Jenner. Her lioness fit left everyone in an uproar. The makeup mogul wore a black velvet dress complete with a giant hyper-realistic roaring lion head attached to her chest made from sculpted foam, wool, and faux fur. Though critics say it still promotes trophy hunting, it got PETA's stamp of approval. But many can't stop talking about the moment Kylie saw Irina Shayk strut down the runway in the exact same dress. Well, the dresses are from the same collection, so maybe it was planned. But that's not the only Kylie moment that has gone viral. Enter Doja Cat. The singer arrived in another Scaparelli number, a crimson silk bustier with a matching wrap trailing from her elbows and a knitted pencil skirt dripping with lacquered wooden beads. She's barely recognizable. And get this, she was wearing 30,000 red Swarovski crystals covering her face, head and arms, all of which was hand applied by her makeup artist, a task that took nearly five hours. Now back to the exchange with Kylie. The internet is going nuts over this moment with Doja. It appears Doja says, good to see you, but the exchange doesn't seem very friendly. And social media just can't get enough. With one user writing, Kylie deaf thought she was gonna be the look at the show and then Doja walked in. Someone else tweeted, I just know Kylie's Leo pride was hurt at Doja's response, 
but she had to save face because the cameras and flashing lights were in front of her. Come on, guys, there's room for fashion for all of us. And we'll be right back with the TikToks of the week. Let's take a look at the latest trends on TikTok this week. You think your girl doesn't know anything about football? Ask her who the quarterback of the Bengals is. Joe Burrow. She probably knows what number he wears. Number nine. Whether you're a football fan or not, you might recognize this guy. Joe Burrow has been on every girl's minds this football season, and now as the conference championship matchups are set, Burrow fans are showing their full support for the QB on TikTok. Must be exhausting, always rooting for the anti-hero. Creators have been obsessing over the 26-year-old with fan-made edits set to songs by Taylor Swift and SZA. The Joe Burrow hashtag has collectively surpassed over 1.5 billion views. We have a special pledge helper today, my son Joe Burrow. Even the NFL's TikTok account is getting in on the Joey B craze by posting an old clip of him and his mom reciting the Pledge of Allegiance to students during the pandemic. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Guess it's safe to say Joe has a lot of people rooting for him. Hope you enjoy these custom jerseys and don't worry, we corrected Isaac's. This here is my jersey and this is Isaac's jersey. That's just straight up says Allison? Yeah. Boy, it needs to say Rochelle. Uh, they also sent you one. Oh <laughs> my gosh. Sticking to the football field, another person that burst onto the TikTok scene is Allison Cooch. Married to Raiders defensive end Isaac Rochelle, Allison has taken over the platform by offering a more candid look into the life of NFL wives and by always reminding her husband he's the one married to her. They can say Cooch, Allison's husband, the Even NFL Isaac's gotten in on the fun too. When answering what it's like to be referred to him, as Allison's husband, husband Allison responded in a clever way by putting him in his place Rochelle, out on the couch. We could only hope Allison's husband learned his lesson after that one. <laughs> 2023 Miss Universe was Miss America, but she's not the one with the TikTok crown. Miss France's 2018 introduction has made a comeback on the internet. TikTokers have made it into a trend, imitating not just Miss France, but other contestants as well. Even Aubrey Plaza, along with the cast of SNL, got in on the fun. Albania! Canada! Denmark! So how is Miss France taking in the influx of online attention? She's unbothered by it, sipping on her wine and flashing a smile, just like a winner. I love it. Okay, I was already following Joe Burrow, but now I have many more people to follow, especially Allison. That's a wrap for this episode. Thanks for watching. I'm Suzanne Marquez. See you again next week on The Live.